In the news this week, recommendations for a conversion therapy ban in Scotland threaten parents and churches, applications for divorce rocket in England and Wales, and a baby girl is alive and well after her mum resisted doctor's pressure to have an abortion. Hello. A report on ending supposed conversion practices in Scotland puts parents and churches in the firing line, campaigners are warning. In an alarming statement, an advisory group to the Scottish Government said parents' rights could be modified or even withdrawn if they uphold the reality of biological sex. Preaching, prayer and pastoral care are also threatened. Let Us Pray, a campaign spearheaded by the Christian Institute, criticised the report for promoting LGBT theology and undermining free speech. Members of the Scottish Government appointed group behind the highly controversial report included Stonewall and LGBT Youth Scotland. Let Us Pray spokesman Simon Calvert highlighted the dangers of the proposals. This report proposes some pretty severe measures against people that don't go along with LGBT ideology. It, it suggests that church leaders should be defrocked and delicensed. It suggests that churches should not be able to hire buildings. Uh, it, it even suggests that parents who, for example, won't go along with their child's gender transition should potentially have their children taken off them. It, it, it's, it's, it's very authoritarian, it's very severe. If all of these measures were only going to apply to people who actually verbally and physically abuse gay people, then it might be proportionate. But that's not the threshold for the offence that they're proposing. Um, the offence that they're proposing doesn't even require proof that, that anybody has harmed anyone or intended to harm anyone. So it's really criminalising conversations. So we must pray that Christians and others in Scotland will find their voices to speak out against these draconian and dangerous proposals. Divorce applications have reached their highest number in a decade following the introduction of no-fault divorce in England and Wales. Ministry of Justice statistics revealed there were 33,566 applications for divorce and dissolution of civil partnerships between April and June 2022. That's 22% up on last year and the highest since 2012. The Divorce, Dissolution and Separation Act came into effect in April. Under the new law, the applicant can get a divorce in just six months without having to give a reason and their spouse cannot contest it. Speaking to BBC Radio Ulster, the Institute's Kieran Kelly spelled out the tragic consequences that lie behind the statistics. You can talk about um, whether this is a, a spike in the figures or not a spike, but that, I mean, that really just misses the point about the tragedy of divorce. Changing the law doesn't remove the acrimony that's caused by the disputes over assets and children. The evidence shows that children are uh, 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 affected badly by the nature of a divorce. Northern Ireland shouldn't be trying to make the same mistake or talking about making the same mistake that England and Wales has tragically already made. Cannabis is as dangerous as heroin and crack cocaine, a group of police commissioners have warned. David Sidwick, Police and Crime Commissioner for Dorset, said it's time for cannabis to be reclassified as a Class A drug. Backed by fellow commissioners for Devon and Cornwall and Avon and Somerset, Mr Sidwick said, We need tough sanctions for possession and to halt the drive towards decriminalisation. We need the penalties for this illegal gateway drug to match those of Class A substances. In a challenge to those seeking a soft approach to drugs, the Dorset Commissioner said, People who call this drug recreational haven't seen the harm that psychosis and other cannabis-related conditions can do. In response, the Home Office said it has no plans to change the classification of cannabis. And finally, a baby girl is alive and well at 14 months after her mother ignored advice to have her aborted. Katie White was shocked when an ultrasound at 20 weeks revealed her unborn baby had a build-up of fluid on the brain. Her doctor predicted that the baby would be unlikely to walk, talk or even eat. Medics sought to persuade Katie to have an abortion, but she ignored them and now says, My daughter would not be here today if I had taken that advice. Kensley required an operation to drain the fluid from her brain and was later fitted with a device to control the excess liquid. Four months later, scans revealed her brain growth exceeded all expectations. Her mother said, The 14-month-old is full of character and is my little angel. I wouldn't change her for the world. 
Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.